It is very cool to talk to you both about Plan B. I think it's fascinating. I love the concept. I'm curious, before I get to some of my other questions, you know, what what drew you to the project? Because obviously there's a lot, but I'm, I'm curious for you, what, what was the draw? Um, I knew how good it was. I had watched a show seven years ago in Quebec, and um, yeah, I knew it was efficient. I knew it was satisfying as a viewer to watch it. And although I was, um, I have to admit, a little, a little intimidated to redo some of those scenes because they were so well well explored in the original version. Um, yeah, it was scary a little bit, but it was fun to uh, say yes to it all. Yeah. Um, for me, so many things. Uh, I really wanted to work in Canada more. That was the initial impulse before mm -hmm. I even knew that Plan B existed. Uh, I had uh, been talking about how I really wanted to find the right thing to come back to Canada and just start working more in Canada, making Canadian shows, make, telling Canadian stories in Canada, in a city where you're not trying to make it look like New York or somewhere else, but that it is a Canadian city. I was, I'm, I'm sort of, as I get older, more passionate and determined than ever to, to do that. So that sort of set the table. And mm -hmm. then we found um, Plan B. And like Corinne said, uh, you know, I, I hadn't heard of it as a show before nor seen it, but it's pretty wild to not just get the scripts to a potential job, uh, but to also get six filmed episodes. And so I got to sit and watch it with my wife and uh, thought, well, we'll watch a couple just to get a sense. And then boom, six episodes were gone. And I was like, well, that's really fascinating to know that something works. Like before you even step on set, you know it works. And then more um, tonally or really more about the character mm -hmm. for me, I was really, um, I would say in the last sort of three or four years of my life, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a big shift to get away from something that I think Phil Grimmer in this show is suffering from which is this real need to control the world around mm -hmm. him this like this thinking that if i could just if i could just line up everything just the right way and do everything in the right way that it needs to be done then life will be perfect not just for me but for all the people around me and it's such a dangerous way of thinking and um mm -hmm. and had caused me in my life no sort of end of suffering and dis-ease and discomfort and and bitterness and and so I had been really in the last few years trying to tackle that and 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 changing that kind of thing and here comes this you know really amazing story that dealt with all of that for me that's what it was that's what this story was about was a sort of a cautionary tale of like a good guy you know a, a guy who I could relate to who just hasn't done that work, hasn't figured that out yet. And just how you can run roughshod through mm. a perfect, through a perfectly good life and a, and a relationship that's full of potential and love just by trying to control it too much and not mm. knowing how to just let it be what it needed to be. So for me, that was totally the, the draw. I mean, it was not comfortable because as I said, I'd spent a lot of time in my own life getting away from that way of thinking, but I thought, wow, that's a really cool way to like, maybe button the work I've been doing mm. in my own life to say, to be like, to really put a period on the end of that sentence and go like, that does not work. <laughs> doing things that way does not work. Well, I love the conversation too, that we see at least, especially in the first episode that, you know, that work life balance that everyone strives for that so often we let get away from us, that work becomes too all powerful. So, I mean, starting with you, Kareen, how do you think, you know, I guess more stepping back about about Evelyn and how she relates to him, you know, what what do you think she's, how do you think she's going through life compared to him? Because they, they feel at polar opposites most of the time. She forgets about herself hmm. completely. Like, it's not even, I wonder, I don't even think it's on her list of priority. I don't think it's in third position. I just think it's nowhere to be found. Like it's just, mm. and it's so easy to fall into that. Like you, it could be professionally, it could be with your family, it could be with anybody you're having a relationship with, but it's so difficult to remind yourself. It's so satisfying that feeling of, you know, I've found someone, I've met someone, I've met a group of people with whom I feel comfortable. I feel seen, you know, and then being 
seen by them becomes more important than seeing yourself almost. And then obviously they can't be focused on you. Like it's just eventually they'll go back to themselves and it's just, so if you haven't really um, protected that uh, zone in yourself where you know what you want, you know who you want to be, who you are that we never really answer that, I guess, but it's, it's, but I think she, yeah, she loses sight of that. So, um, so by when we meet her and that was so, that was so challenging to meet them when things are going so wrong, when she wants to leave enough. And I feel like we see her wanting to leave the relationship, wanting to end it, but at the same time, obviously being attached to the relationship, uh, doubting herself about her decision, uh, wanting to be away from him so that she can really uh, almost convince herself that, no, no, it's going to be fine. She'll go back to whatever she thinks she should do in her life. And it's, uh, but it's so difficult to do that when you've lost when you've lost track of yourself for so long you know and that can happen so quickly yeah and so how can you go from like being completely that feeling of being in love be having wings and then feeling that you're trapped and that you're not free at all anymore and the fear that comes with that and um you know feeling almost dead as if you're not in tune with life not with your own life not with other people's life it's just like a repetition of something that does not um makes you feel like you're living your own life you know yeah mm. so that was interesting to explore uh a good reminder also <laughs> i guess of how yeah it's just and sometimes you do it by you, you do it thinking that it's to it's going to benefit the relationship because mm. that's what you should do you should you know compromises yes obviously but um but there's a certain limit to um to that um to being that devoted yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it feels comfortable, you know, instead of asking right. yourself, you know, uncomfortable questions, you just uh, throw yourself in the other person's life. Mm. So you end up, you end up resenting them, but you know, you're the one who decided to do that in the first place also. Yeah. Well, Patrick, on your side of things with Philip, one of the things that I really like about the series is that, you know, Time travel, which is a part of this series, uh, has been used in so many different ways. We've seen it in so many action movies. But it's been a long time, in my mind, since we've seen too many films where time travel was dealing with personal drama and, and you know, personal relationships mm -hmm. and things. You know, for you playing Philip jumping into this journey that he's kind of going into as it starts, uh, you know, how, how do you think he relates to this opportunity? I guess to to redo things. How does he relate to it? Yeah, like do you? I think. It's why an do you example, think he? I think I think it's an example of like the like the the worst tool being given to the worst guy. You know, like I think I, I I had to approach Phil from a point of view of no judgment about him and thinking there's a good heart in there and he wants he's in love and he loves this woman and he's, you know, he just doesn't have the tools to kind of figure out the right way forward. So I think all of this is very well intentioned. It goes a little bit back to what Corinne was just talking about, which is like these, nobody wants any ill will for anybody here for themselves or, or, or each other. Um, but they don't have the appropriate tools to figure out yeah. their path forward. And the most inappropriate tool for this guy is this power, you know, is yeah. this like, like giving a control freak, you know, an obsessive compulsive control freak, uh, the power to go back and start, you know, not just to try and control things in his own life now, but to go back and start trying to shift pieces on the board in the past. It's just, it's way too much power, which I think is sort of the fun of the series to me. It's like, oh God, what happens when you give this guy that tool? I mean, you know, at first, great. Oh, I can fix that little thing. Oh, I can be nicer on this day. I can remember that little thing I forgot. Okay. I can just like on the surface, make some, some things better, but the underlying knots that have been tied over years, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, you know, the resentment between the two people, all these, the ways that his pattern of behavior have tied this whole relationship in knots forever. You keep trying to undo it and undo it. I mean, we laugh about how there's so many points in this series. We'd always be like, what could Phil do now? Like, what would be the right thing for these two people? Like, what would be the, the thing that would end this show in episode two or in episode three if he was just like, you know what? And it would usually just be 
come clean, be honest, be present, be accountable, Hmm. say you've screwed up and be like, what can I do to make things better? Right? Like, that's what I would hope I now, you know, after living 40 years and making enough mistakes, that's how I would hopefully deal with something like, you know, if I found myself in a situation like Phil, Uh, but he just doesn't know how to do that. And so he just keeps thinking, Oh, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. And, you know, of course, everything ends up completely broken. That is a great jumping off point for something I was thinking about. I mean, every show kind of ends up with a villain. And I mean, it did feel very early on, like Phil ends up being the villain here. Mm. So, I mean, there's obviously various factors, but I mean, obviously when you're playing a character, you can't, you can't play the villain, but I'm Mm. I'm curious for both of you, Mm. how you relate to I guess that concept. I mean, maybe this is just something the viewer will think about, but is it something either of you thought about in this series? Something we thought a lot about right when we started, which was, you know, and 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 we both obviously loved the original show, but when you remake something, there is the conversation, okay, okay, well, what didn't work as well? Or what do we want to do differently? What are we really going to try and, you know, you've gotten this far down the field, how far, much further are we going to go? Um, and, and what, what would you, you know, to the creators, what would you guys fix? If you could do it all over Mm. again, what did you learn? What would you do differently? And one thing we sort of landed on, not sort of did land on, and that we were really passionate about Karina and I was, um, you know, the trick, the, the hard part of the structure of this show is you're finding these characters, uh, at the beginning in the worst days of their life, right? Like what you're seeing on screen, the majority is like, this relationship is broken. There's not much to it. And that's a hard thing as an audience to want to stay with. So for us, we were really determined to find those places of connection, um, that 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 the, those moments of love between those two people, the thing that would keep the audience invested in like, oh, oh, like there's a reason he's fight, like he's doing this because he's trying to get back to an actually a really good, pure place between the two of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and to put off the villainous aspect as long as possible to 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 make it as relatable as possible for as long as possible um so that some of these you know more horrible things that end up happening or ways in which he kind of manipulates behind her back especially because he's going back in time that they're almost understandable given the deep connection that they have so Mm -hmm. we we looked as as actors, we were just looking for any and every moment that we could have where we would we could show the audience who these people could be if only they could they could kind of figure their way out of it. Anything to add, Karina? I have no Anything? idea if that did. Did that answer your question at all? I feel like yeah, no, I think that's perfect. What about you, Karina? Did you have anything to add on that kind of angle? On I mean, obviously, she doesn't see him necessarily as a villain, except you know, she no. maybe want to break up with him but <laughs> i mean you, how many episodes have you watched two <laughs> no but obviously she doesn't want to see him as a villain i mean it's terrible to think that you've been with a villain for so many years so mm-hmm. I, I think you're the, the the first thing you want is just to go back to that initial perception you had of that human being you don't you certainly don't want to think that you were with someone who you know that you didn't see clearly through that mm-hmm. person so i feel like that willingness to always want to kind of erase the the not so nice part of someone it's always to confirm that you were right in the first place in the first place your intuition was right you know your feeling your initial feeling was right you saw the right thing you know it's so difficult to then go back about your own decision you know was i did, i wasn't I didn't, I didn't perceive the right thing did i was i completely off like what did i see then so i feel like she she's always happy to kind of reconfirm that okay no no he is a good guy he is a good guy but at the same time it's so confusing because sometimes it just it doesn't make sense it doesn't add up and it doesn't erase you know how he how she felt and the the behavior he's had for the past few months or years or whatever and so it's just um um but it was it was really fun to see how how small it could be what makes you believe in a relationship like sometimes it's just a look it's just uh that you know quick memory of a specific moment that comes and it's just it's nothing specific it's nothing even that special but it's just it felt good you felt at the right place Mm. and I feel like that's all what 
I mean, we all want to feel that. You all want to, you, we all want to feel that, you know, you found it. And it's so easy to hang on to that feeling. But things are changing. People are evolving. And if you're not paying attention, if you're not listening, you're going to miss a few pieces of information. And eventually, it, yes, it will become something else. Mm. And uh, where will you be at the end, you know? Yeah. And that's why I think you said it at the beginning, Andrew, like time travel films that specifically deal with relationships are some of the, like, because it is the most it's such a potent thing in any relationship, mm. whether it's a loving relationship like like this, like an intimate relationship or something in your family where it has changed over time and you still have this like, wait, it was it was this though. It was so mm. good and it was so pure. Like it can happen in friendships. It can happen in families. Mm -hmm. Like how do we, and, and so that instinct to just be like, how do we get back to that, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and it, it's a, I, I think there's like a deep want there that everyone can relate to, like, yeah. like, I, God, if someone just gave me the option to like, get back to that place, and then figure out where we lost track, and then just don't do that, like, I just want to stay in this place, but, you know, the nature of humanity, and the nature of relationships is they do change, and it can be very difficult to just admit that because truthfully maybe that's another ending of this that's earlier which is these two people looking at each other's eyes and being like it's not working i love you like go mm -hmm, be happy mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. maybe two very mature versions of these characters would be able to yeah. say like the most loving thing i can do for you now is to say goodbye mm -hmm. and let you go on with your yeah. life but they're stuck in the middle where it's like no that want that 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 the beauty of this, the kernel of the relationship is too good. So for us, it was fun mm. to find as many places as possible where anytime we found ourselves in a scene that was like a flashback or something before, mm -hmm. we wanted to just keep shooting. We were like, just we'll make up words, we'll improvise. But like, because we got so little of it and it was the rest of it was all the carnage. Karina and I would be like, let's just be here and maybe it'll be useful in the show we'll shoot more we'll be in a bathtub laughing and telling jokes and just shoot a lot of it because anywhere you could eject that into the show i think will do the job of like setting settling into the for the audience like there's there was something worth fighting here for and there's a reason that this guy is doing some very terrible duplicitous things because he really just wants to get back to that thing hmm. Well, the relationship is wonderful. I I love every twist and turn. The last very quick thing I'll ask is, can you tell me, you know, without any spoilers, obviously, kind of what this journey is going to be like in this first, you know, these these episodes? Hopefully, I don't know if there's a plan for a second season, but, uh, you know, what does this look like? It's, it's a self-contained season. I think there's, if it does well, I think there's room for them to keep telling plan B stories as they're doing in French. But uh, mm -hmm. for this story of these characters, it is it is self-contained. And I guess I would just say it's, um, uh, when I started watching the show in French, I thought, oh, okay, I know exactly how this is going to go. <laughs> going to make some mistakes, but mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, they're going to figure it out. And they're gonna they're gonna find their way. They're gonna realize the error of their ways, and it's gonna reconnect them. And uh, I love that it didn't it didn't do that, and it didn't tie it all up in a bow, and it wasn't afraid to show the real consequences of this kind of of this kind of behavior. So um, you know, there's lots in store. the The rabbit hole is deep, and uh, and I feel like we're so not used to seeing the real consequences that it's almost like what. Oh, they're yeah. sending them there no yeah. no no please don't no 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 yeah. no. that's gonna be worse so then yeah. yeah i think that's satisfying also because you yes. as you said we don't expect as viewers the stories yeah. the story to go in that direction yeah yeah like they're like it's gonna get tied up we're gonna yeah, they're gonna take care of us a little bit and mm -hmm. uh what what jf you know the show runner and creator did so well is he's not afraid to to push these people way down into the depths so yeah. Yeah. And yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot in store. It's a great season. We hope people stick it out. It's very exciting. I, I gotta say to have a show like this that's that's you know, you really don't know where things are going. So thank yeah, you very much for the time to talk about it. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate thank you. It. And it's gonna stay like that until the very end. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank Bye. you, Andrew.